Welcome back, everyone. It's Tommy Talks with the Brown Dog. we got Wildcat, in fact, next to me, and he's going to break down the spring carnival. He gives us all these tips, a couple of classics, and some gems, some stories that have never been told on a podcast. This has it all, so make sure you tune in right here. Aces, I know I always go on about the Rixies, but i got huge news. We have all our styles and colours restocked on the website right now. It's been months. We ran out of stock, but we're back. Get online, grab some sunglasses at rickseyewear.com.au right now and use our little discount code ACES if you want a 20% discount code on the house. Righto, let's get into the show. Welcome back, everyone. It's Tommy Talks, and we are joined by royalty, Spring Carnival royalty, football royalty, just a big mad dog, brown yeah, dog, trying. the wildcat. The wildcat. Good to see you, brother. <laughs> the only people Mate. that have been writing in about that wildcat. Moving into your apartment's nearly killed me, no. man. I'm, so, I'm surprised I'm still here. I've never met a man that drinks more piss and looks so good. <laughs> hey, what is the it's secret? It's the eye of the beholder, mate. <laughs> uh, it's uh, I don't eat breakfast. I never eat breakfast. Yeah. Um, I haven't cooked a meal since I've been in there. <laughs> um, so the meal is, I don't know, I just don't eat. Is it true you eat microwave meals that are out of date by a month? <laughs> I eat whatever's left in the fridge, mate. Oh, wild cat. Doesn't matter what it is. Thai, Chinese, dumplings. <laughs> I eat them. Someone wrote in, what's your KFC order? I don't think I've ever seen you eat KFC. No, nah, no, nah, I don't eat KFC. I'm a Macca's man. Hey, but I do eat, um, you know my rice phobia. You have to have every single grain of rice. Otherwise, what? Oh, otherwise, oh, nothing, just, I've never, I've just, if it's, if it's rice, if I get fried rice or a bowl of rice, I have to eat every grain. And if it falls out around me, I have to eat it. <laughs> yeah. <and> like, <laughs> you, don't, you don't do leftovers, do you? No, nah, I don't do, I might, might be OCD or something, but like if it's on your plate, like I'll look at it and be disappointed in you, but my plate, all rice eaten. And then like when I was playing at the Hawks and the boys picked up on my phobia, they'd be like, oh, look at that. And I'd look and I'd, they'd throw rice on my plate <laughs> and then I'd, I'd have to eat it even though if I was like full. That's unbelievable. Yeah. It's, I, think we've, I think you've actually told me this with drinks as well. I think we've had a few wines at yours and people have left half. Very frustrating. And you drink them because you can't handle the look of it. I don't like, yeah, I just like to finish the job. You hate wastage. Yeah. Yeah, I like to finish the job, you know, unless it's the English Channel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you gave that a red hot crack, though. But there's you? been a couple of times. Tell me who who hasn't done this before. Like you're going around a house party and you're cleaning up, right? Oh, Especially yeah. if it's your house, and then you'll pick up a a, a can, and you go, oh, it's, "It's still half full," and that's when I go, oh, "I'm gonna." And I have a couple of swigs, mate, and people have been putting their cigarettes oh. in there. <laughs> you ever done that? No. Oh, it's despicable no. behaviour. I grab it and throw it oh, in it's the an sink. absolute yeah. disgrace. I've done that. End up with a mouthful of cigarettes. <laughs> Fuck, it annoys me. That is, uh, that is a disgrace. Smoking in a house as well. Is that that's play on or out of bounds? No. Nah, sm- smoking, no. Vaping, yes. Cigars? Cigars, if it's your own place, okay. No. <laughs> That's why you said that. <laughs> well, I've seen that brown dog suck a cigar at all hours and just, I think the alarm was about a couple of puffs off and yeah. just stunk the joint out. Yeah, I know. They'll be happy when I leave, man. <laughs> the, the, the Capital Grand's turned into the Cosmopolitan. Oh, yeah. Jeez, has it ever. Mate, big year. Yeah. Couple, three highlights from the year. Just for you? Oh, I think the footy season uh, was everything the AFL would want it to be. Um Really competitive up until, you know, the last few rounds. There was probably 12 or 13 sides that could generally play finals. Had a one of the all-time great final series, some unbelievable comebacks. Sydney Swans in that first qualifying final against the Giants. Brisbane, um, pretty pretty special year, I thought. So that was, yeah, that was a, the highlight. Um, Look at the grin. Just <laughs> two more coming. I reckon <laughs> no, these, are the, these are the real highlights. Get the media uh, commitments out the way with the footy. Uh, no, I reckon, like, it was, a, it was a highlight watching the Hawks come from nothing. Like, zero on five, no expectation. And the way that they played, put a smile, on, I think, on everyone's face. Annoyed me the way they finished the season because I think they're a better side than Port and should have should have got the job done over there. But um, young sides should learn from it. Um, and the third highlight... <laughs> <laughs> Kentucky Derby. Yeah, Kentucky Derby. Went oh. over there and um, did Royal Ascot last year, Kentucky this year. What's better, 
Or what would you prefer if you oh, had to oh, if you were to choose Kentucky next year and you said I've only got one on the list, which one would you take? Kentucky. Every oh, day why? of the week. Oh, I just that was more my vibe. So you go over to Royal Ascot and you got the top hat and tail and it's it took about an hour and forty five minutes to get there and it's quite pompous and like yeah. um Kentucky like started at like ten o'clock, so you get there at nine thirty, you're getting given free poured whiskeys, all right? Um and it goes till about seven o'clock at night, loose as. You can sort of go anywhere. You can walk anywhere with your drinks. You're not getting stopped in certain places. Um, I wore like a a pink tuxedo. Just see the kid up, the I kid was, I had. The, I saw a lot of mud on it. And the Stenson hat, like a cowboy hat. Um, yeah, just a good crew as well. So, no, I reckon Kentucky, if you – I'm going to try and tick them all off, go to Japan Cup and um, – Arc de Triomphe and a few others, but really glad I went to Kentucky this year. What's the, like, is it a crew? Like, you got to go with a crew? You yeah, can't... you got to go very with a crew. And, like, and imagine and going you... somewhere by yourself or nah. with your missus. Like, <laughs> that's depressing. <laughs> 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 and, like, how many, <laughs> when you organize this crew, well, like, how many do you reckon the per? Like, I want you to sell Kentucky because I, I, I might go. I, I yeah, want to know, how do um, I go? Like, is there, a, is there a booking service you go and they do tours or is it just? I just did the, do- get a the, the dog tour, the brown dogs tour. <laughs> <laughs> you should start. We went to Lexington and did like the stud farms and stuff there, which yeah. was unbelievable. They wheel out American Pharaoh and um, horses like that at Coolmore, which was just, you know, great. And then um, went down to Louisville. Oh, I reckon you need six, six to eight because as the trip unfolds, blokes are having big nights, backing up, right? But you always lose a couple mm. each night. Um, and so – you you know, if you if you want to go out and really give it a crack, you always need your three, four, five guys just to yeah to get around you. I like that. I like that. And uh, what time of the year is Kentucky Derby again? Uh, it was the first week of May. Oh, yeah. that's not a bad time. Yeah, it's good. Bit of winter over here. I'd take a couple of weeks off the footy, mate. We're uh, we're all about the spring carnival with the brand dog. Last year, you. You tipped the house down. Yeah, did. I did. I, I did by accident. <laughs> well, not by accident. Nothing no. happens by accident in my world. But uh, I reckon a tissue got up on the last day at Flemington. And I, um, I tipped that at 20 to 1 or something. Yeah. Completely forgot. So Did you did you back it? Didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> when you reminded me, I was absolutely ropeable. Well, when all these people were riding, you go, that brown dog's the king, and you're going, you've got to be fucking kidding me. You jumped off and jumped on something else. Well, yeah, a month's a long time, you know, yeah. in, on the punt. Yeah. Um, but there's a few we like, obviously, coming up Everest this weekend in Caulfield Cup, so that's going to be massive day of racing both here in Sydney, um, and then we'll roll into the Cox Plate and Derby and Melbourne Cup, so it Is it good. a stitch-up if your mate puts his birthday on the Friday night before Everest? It's not ideal, especially if you plan a trip. Is it selfish? Uh, well, I think you should always ask your guests, um, <laughs> you know, if they're going to the Everest. <laughs> I'll tell you what's worse, though. It's someone having their wedding on – Grand final day or cup a cup or derby day like derby day that's what, horrendous behaviour. What do you think that happens? Again, the missus is just trying to get back at him, or is, uh, what, what, why would someone do that? I can't possibly think of why anyone would do that, and, and it I happens can't, all the time. I can't possibly think of why the the guy, the, the groom to be, would allow it. Like, just put your foot down. So it's not happening. Fall in line. <laughs> you know I, I, mean? I agree. We get married. Is it cheap? Just choose three hundred and sixty four other fucking days. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a problem with you, my wife to be. I have a problem with the date you're setting. <laughs> Pretty simple. Is it cheaper or something? Uh, I don't know. I would have thought it's expensive. Even your guests are pissed off because, like, they're ducking out watching the races. Like, you want the data to be focused yeah. around you, not people watching horse races or, or footy. <laughs> I, I totally agree. It is outrageous. Yeah. Um, Okay, big big carnival coming up. We're going to split this up. We'll talk a little bit of shit. We've got your questions there, guys. We're going to break down Brown Dog's tips. At the, we'll obviously, at the end of the podcast, we'll get them all and we'll put up a graphic. But let's start. We're going to turn this podcast as quick as we can oh, around. So, yeah. Brado over there behind the machine. I told him. We've got, got Caulfield yeah, Cup because... and Everest. We have to get your tips in for that. So, let's just start with this weekend coming up. We record this on a Thursday afternoon. You may all should be strong for this because it's, it's around the corner. I'll let you off if it's Melbourne Cup and a couple of things change. But right now with our futures – Give us a winner at Caulfield Cup and the Everest. Yeah, good race at Caulfield Cup this year. Um, I really like two horses. I'll, I'll, I'll be transparent. I've, I was backing Warmonger right throughout in the futures bet. In the way that uh, Warmonger, who's – I know a lot of friends in the horse. Um, the way it, it absolutely bolted in up in um, Queensland to win that group one by 10 lengths was was unbelievable. Ran time as well. 
So I've been chipping away at it. Um, but the horse that I want to back is Zardozzi. Uh, really, really good performance last start. Um, meets the horse that beat it um, in that bobbing photo finish. A um, couple of kilos lighter, which should help over um, the, the, the 2,400. And, um, yeah, they're both, I think Zardozzi's $10-ish. Um, Warmonger's around $15. So they're both good each way plays. And um, I reckon they're the two that I'm going to be having my money on. And then um, if we go up to Sydney in the um, Everest, Jolie Star, what a what a horse! Um, it's a good Everest, like yeah, yeah. You, you've got plenty of plenty of chances. The three year olds uh, have got a, a strong hand in it as well. Storm Boy and Traffic Warden, but um, Jolie Star's the the one I want to be on. About six bucks, um, but going beautifully. It's first up performance was just unbelievable. Um, Who's writing it? Uh, so um, J Mac has chose to to ride it, um, and it, it just it couldn't have been more impressive first up, and then it was just a, a little bit flat second up. Um, got beat by Sunshine in um, Paris, um, and ran third that day. But um, five weeks between runs, I think bounces right back from a good barrier. So J Mac, yeah, he, he's a he's a bloody good jockey, and um, he would have the the choice of a couple, and he's chosen to stick with Jolie Starrick and. Um, is that an issue though? Because I think I backed it second up after it bolted in first up, and it looked flat, flat as a yeah, ball. Yeah, but sometimes it happens. Sometimes it happens. But so. the good horses don't go that flat. Like it was, it was running on top of the ground. Its second up was a bit. Oh, mate, you're always prepared to forgive from one bad run. You know, we don't always dominate on the footy field every week. Sometimes, oh, well, I don't dominate every week. So you know my forms. <laughs> my forms well, are consistent. So what about? It's a bit like the brown dog in the so, back pocket. So you know? we, need to tell the, we need to tell the listeners that um, we're sitting around my joint Saturday night. You know, we had a nice <laughs> day at the dare. races and um, had 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 a friend over from had a couple actually. Yeah, a few friends over. One was from Queensland. He's not. He's not into his footy. Mm. Like, knows a few players, but um, and. You got out your highlights. Well, they tell the story properly. You got out your highlights. Yeah, you started what you showing yourself. Him? What are you? What are you? Guys, what are you doing with yourself? And I go, I don't fucking know what I do these days. But he, he said, goes, I played a few games goes, with the doctors and the Giants. I said, yeah, he played eighty odd. He goes, and he only fell off his chair. Yeah. So you pulled out your highlights and you started showing him, and he goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on a second. How many years did you say you played for? <laughs> he said, I oh, bet eight. Was it eight or nine? Nine. Nine. Seven. Probably. He goes, and you played eighty games. Why do your highlights only go for 66 <laughs> seconds? <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, big shout out to Paulie. <laughs> yeah, Paulie rolled me there. He loved it though. He goes, oh, I, I can't believe you played footy. And I filmed it. Yeah, you filmed me. But look, the highlights come out every now and then, a couple of beers, you know how it is, but uh, you got to remind them. You kick a couple of sausages on the G, mate. Some other blokes haven't even walked on the on the field, so you just put them back in their place when they give you those little cheap shots round off. That's right, mate. Put him right back in his box. You know why I've got that highlight reel? Because when, uh, when I was about to get the arse at Freo, so someone said, put together a little highlight reel so we can flick it to a couple of right, people. Right, so you you did it yourself. You nah, it I yourself. cut it up for me, and I've only got it on WhatsApp, so that's why I remember I just flicked it to you. Yeah. But, um, geez, oh. the head was a bit sore the next day because I remember I flicked it to you saying, you, and then I just, And then you deleted it. You can unsend it. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I've only just learned about unsending. Oh, that's amazing. I wish I knew that fucking two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, you like Jolly Star. Yeah, um, open race, but I reckon Jolly Star will be given every chance. Maps absolutely perfectly from barrier four. Freak of a horse. If it can if it can uh, replicate what it did first up, she'll be hard to beat. And, like, just think, like, this time last year, think about it. It won the Everest. Hasn't won since, but it's going around at $67. Like, That's it's nice. giga kick as well. It's been off the scene for 12 months injured. It won two years ago. They reckon it's flying 14 bucks. So if you find the winner um, – You'll make some good money because it is a very open Everest, which is exactly what you know you want for a sprint race like this. Is it the best race in Australia? Yep, by a mile. Yep, I reckon. Yeah, I, I, I've said on this podcast last year. I love Peter Volandis. He's he's a ruthless, hard ass um, that has put Sydney racing first to the detriment maybe of you know, Melbourne racing and a, a united Australian racing scene, but. That's his prerogative, um, and he's competitive, and he's got the Everest flying. I mean, the barrier draw was great. He's got the best sprinters in the world. He's got genuine interest. Oh, I don't know if King Charles is going to lob at Ramwick on um, Saturday, but he might because he's got he's got the, the the race named after him a bit later in the day. Old sausage fingers. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking. You got to give me some context. His fingers. Oh, mate, Google them. 
No, but is he actually in town? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he yeah, might be going yeah, to the races. I yeah, didn't there's, know that. Is he there's in a town? King Charles, uh, the, the King Charles Stakes. Um, there you go. A bit, bit later in the day, I think it's race uh, race nine. So he might be there. That's pretty big. To hand over the trophy um, to the, the winner. The sausage fingers. I haven't seen the fingers. Oh, <laughs> mate, horrendous. How yeah. bad? We'll edit up a picture of his fingers and put them in the clip. Oh, mate, as bad you as you'll see. His, when you shake his hand? Just, he must have a condition. Right. You know, like they're real thick and like little sausage dog horrendous. Yeah. There you go. We'll have so, to put that up. I mean, I just had to ask this. And you look at you telling me these stories as if I had any idea King Charles is in Sydney and his fingers were sausages. Right. <laughs> I thought everyone would have known that. <laughs> I'm the not king's really. come to town. Yeah. Well, you, I'm, well, you're looking, I'm looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> the king's in Melbourne at the moment. <laughs> the brown dog, it's all good, baby. <laughs> um, Let's talk about your T-shirt collection, right? Oh, you hate it. No, I don't hate it. I just, I just, I love, you got, you're a quote man. When are you going to start your own brand? They're called Brown Dog, and just put all your favourite quotes on a t-shirt. Because I've never met a man that's forty past that rocks quotes on his on his chest. I'm a colour man, <laughs> uh, and I'm a I'm a words man, and I'm a, a Scotch and soda. How much money do you spend at Scotch and soda? That's uh, all I wear. But but I have noticed that like you buy me plain whites and plain blacks, and like you try and dress me a it few times. Work. <laughs> no, it does. It does. I've never I, seen you in a plain T-shirt, and I've bought you four. <laughs> For your birthday, I bought you four yeah, planes in Uniqlo, the grouse. You think I'm too old to be wearing, like, nah. coloured I just love it. It's a new quote every day, and I like that one. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Mate, positive mindset. goes a long way. We're gonna, fucked hey, up world we're living oh, in. Oh, yeah, and we're going to need it this spring carnival because it's tough out there. I know. It's tough. Any advice if you have done your ass and it's racing on, do you go? for the ruffie or do you just keep it simple and double down? No, nah, you, you look for a bit of value. There's value to be found out there <laughs> if you can find it. But um, when the favourite lobs in the last, you, you get even more frustrated because you're like, oh, I could have backed that. But <laughs> them's the breaks, mate. Them's the breaks. When I look at form these days, I'm starting to just go jockey's trainer combo. Nah. I feel like it's, uh, it's it, mate, it's that hard to pick a winner these days. A bit of jockey, com- you know, there's, Nashra Willa is one of my favourites. Tommy Berry up there. And then down here, it's, it's quite consistent. But I feel like Zara's your man. Oh, Zara's having a good season. Blake Shin's just, Blake you Shin's know, he could well. ride a rocking horse to, to victory at the moment. He's, <laughs> his three wins at Caulfield at Guinea Star were great. Obviously, Antino's ride was superb, special. Um, special. <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah, that's la- that's lazy form if you're just going jockey trainer. It is you know, you've got to delve a little bit deeper than that. Yeah, but you tipped me broadsiding at $1.50 last week, and that's as lazy as it gets. <laughs> it come fucking <laughs> How does $1.50 come forth? When it's tipped to be I'll the best tell you why, mate. Jockey <laughs> fell asleep. It was mad <laughs> leader. Asleep. There's one job. Just mad get it on leader speed. bias. Mad leader bias. And sometimes I think I'm on the best horse in the race. So no matter where I'm sitting, no matter what the conditions are doing, no matter what weight I've got, I'll just win. And mate, it's not that easy. What do you reckon the trainer? What does the trainer say to that jockey last week? Oh, like it's more preparing for the Cox Plate, yeah, right? Yeah, it is. But I mean, you'd, you'd love to, to win the Guineas on the way through, um, especially as a short price favourite. And um, but yeah. I, no damage done except for the punter that, you know, rolled it into a few multis. Um, <laughs> rolled it in. <laughs> Took it one out in the cord. Every- yeah. Jamie Carr, this is just good mail for the Aces here uh, on Cox Plate Day. She came into the tent that we're in yeah, and she said in an interview, it's the best horse she's ever ridden in her life. Yeah. Now, she said that at the start of the day, which really hurt because the boys doubled down. But- She's riding that, well, because she's suspended at the moment, but she's riding that in the Cox Plate. Is that a chance to win the Cox Plate? 49 kilos, I think she's going to be riding it it'll on. Be, it'll be in light. Yeah, being really light. She's said it's the best. She's ridden a lot of good horses. Oh, heaps. And she's yeah. said the best by a mile. Yeah. That's a pretty big quote. Yeah, it is. It is. And so you've got to take it on merit. Um, she's out suspended at the moment, so she'll come back hungry, cherry ripe, uh, um, and I think she can win the Melbourne Cup too. Yeah. Oh, you'll save that. Save that. You'll save it. All yeah, right. save that. She's obviously going to have a big spring. Then we'll. Yeah, I'm tipping in the Cox Plate, and this is purely based on hearsay and and other people's opinions. And I know the amount of money that is on us. This Japanese um, horse prognosis. I don't do Japanese form like so. <laughs> um, you know, Mauritius, Hong Kong. Do you, si- you know, yes, Singapore has just been. Uh, abolished, so we can fuck that off. But <laughs> I, I, I Japan, no, right? Um, but horses is one, you know, won some nice races over there. They're pretty selective when they decide they want to bring one here to Australia. And the reports are if prognosis comes, it wins, and it is coming, and it's four bucks. I know people have had 60,000 on it. Really? Yeah. And how are they so confident? Ah, uh, I don't know. But 
<laughs> but, I, I mean, I don't think Mr. Brightside went oh so close um, last year, um, you know, but I think if this horse comes and, you know, gets through quarantine and and runs up to what they, they're saying it's like, it should be winning. Yeah. So that's my tip in, in the Cox Plate prognosis. Pride of Jenny can't go all the way? Oh, uh, I've got a query that. That she'll run a really, really strong two thousand. Um, what and just can't do the last forty? Yeah, like like she'll be out in front bowling along. Catch me if you can, Forrest Gump style. But um, that's the concern. There's a horse called Amelia's Jewel, which I I, I don't mind at value. But the one that I'm, yeah, I'm surprised she's, she's been disappointing too. Yeah. She's come over from Perth and been beaten a couple of times yeah. this prep. That's why she's fifty ones. But why is Fangirl seventeen dollars? I thought Fangirl was a star. Fangirl's a good horse. I actually think Fangirl uh, will win the King Charles um, on Saturday. Uh, yeah. So might might shave in that price uh, if if the horse comes out and wins quite well yeah. Saturday. Um, and, you know, it won't go around at that price in the in the Cox Plate. But, yeah, big spruiks on, on Fangirl as well. And she's been, a, you know, a fraction disappointing. Like right now, like it's hard to pick who the best horse in the country is. You know, some would say Mr. Brightside, some would say Broadsiding, um, some would say Pride of Jenny, right? <coughs> but all of them have gone under recently when we have expected them to win. There's no absolute standout. So, mm. um, Which is great because Wings used to just smack the Cox Plate for six and correct. we have no competition. This is a hard race. Yeah, yeah well, that's right. In so, your time of being alive, you've, how old are you now? Uh, 41. How many Cox Plates can you remember? Uh, oh, I've been to probably... Ten. Yep. I, I used to go when Sunline was running, 99, yep. 2000, 2001. Um, Maccabi Diva won one night in 2005, I reckon it was. I went to all of Winx's four, been the last few, yeah. How many have you seen Ruffies get up? Like, do you think it's a more it's more favourite? You know, the, these horses I've got right here, the top five in Brightside at eight bucks, Broadsiding 550, Prodigy Jenny 480, Via Sestina four fifty, and then your thing prognosis at four dollars. They're I pretty short. Fields of Omar won at like fifteen to one one day, and so do you think we can get a roughie? Pinker, like, but you're right. Like, no forty dollar pops win, yeah. no thirty dollar pops win. You might have won at double figure odds, you know. Like, but um, I mean, it's it's weight for age, best weight for age race in in Australasia, if not the world. So. Um, not, there's not many absolute surprises. Yeah. We've got, yeah. yeah okay. No, I just thought I'd ask a few more questions around the Cox Plate because yeah. I've got a man. And, and one more thing with Mooney Valley, but you really got to get on the leaders, don't you? I, I, I've been a few times, grew up in Essendon, it's around the corner. I've walked home empty handed with the wallet empty because I've just gone for all the best horses, but you really need to get something on the speed, don't you? Yeah, you do. Especially um, early. Well, it's just that short straight, mate. You, they shanghai around the turn and- um, if you can put a length or two on your on the field, it's really hard to to wind up from the back um, and overrun them. You've got to you've got to start that circling move a fair way out, like the five six hundred, and not many horses can sustain that really long run at such a high intensity. So um, it's always been a little bit, you know, be on the on the horses in the first few, and they usually hold on. Yeah. That's what I'll be doing, just getting on the leaders with me jockey combos. <laughs> right, we move on. I'm going to get the questions out soon, but what's your next main race while I uh, – we'll save the Melbourne Cup for last. It's pretty bullish on one that I've been following for a little bit called um, Red Card. Now, Red Card's going to run Saturday. Okay. Um, but uh, it should run well um, up to the 2,000, but it's been a derby horse all the way through. So 1,400 metres was really good. Stepped up to the 800 metres and ran um, ran second last start at Flemington. F- like, terrific run. 2,000 Saturday, which will, again, just tell us a little bit more, bit fitter, and then go to the Derby um, and the 2,500 of the Derby. The great unknown, because no horses have run that trip leading up to it, but y- you want to be back in those that look like they need further. And um, certainly red card. Nick Ryan trains it. Good good trainer. Um Trains Munamek, uh, <laughs> one of my favourites, and yeah, I just I reckon I, like I've, I've had mates, the same owners of Brightside own this, and they've been they had a they try to have a huge bet on Brightside to win the Cox Plate into um, 
red card to win the derby like months ago, months wow. ago, you know, and we're getting hundreds, like hundreds to one on it. Um so it's it's progressing well, and I reckon yeah, it's it's going to be my derby tip. I like that. And derby day, I'll be there. My birthday is just that week before. And we get a little tent and the rails. It's one of my. What are you? Are you working? Where, where, where? Yeah, I'll be working. I'll be there. I'll be just lurking around. Um, you'll hearing... have your, you'll have your Liz Hurley's roll in. I reckon. Um, I reckon Matty Damon might rock up again, like like last year. Um, so. Might catch up with him, mate. You, but, got, you got a bit of mail there. That you, you're pretty tight with Damon and his and No, his I'm not boys. tight with him, but um, the guy that was cranking you about your um, <laughs> highlight, he's very good friends with him. And um, well, I reckon Paul, he owes me a photo with Matty does. Damon yeah, after just, just taking he's me down like that. So he when is. I popped into the um, uh, the Lexus marquee last year, uh, we were standing around and someone asked him for a tip and, and it won, you know. Um, it was the favourite. Um, and I turned to him and said, oh, mate, you're airborne. And he looked at me and said, no, nah, mate, Jason Bourne. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what he said? That what? what a line. Oh. Yeah, from the Bourne identity. <laughs> you just make that up. <laughs> I'll never make it up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jason Bourne, you're yeah. airborne. <laughs> Does he love the races? Loves the races. Matty Damon loves it. He's got a couple of horses with with our mate um, and Paul Massara train them. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Is he the yellow and black colours? Is it uh, Yeah, up in, up in New yeah. South Wales. It's pretty and, sick that I know that. It's good. Yeah, it's good. It's good yeah. research. They got the stud farm. Um, that's <laughs> who else is mingling it? I'm hearing I'm hearing the wildcats in town. The Johnny Stephenson is he? Well, Johnny Steph's in town. Yeah, yeah. I got a. Do you I got get a, wildcat a lot. Uh, I do. When I'm out and about, and I, it's the one thing I know. The couple of things. If someone yells at WTB to me, I know that they're a Brownies podcast listener, right? Because yeah. that means we're the best. WTB. But when they yell out wildcat. <laughs> I know that they're a Tommy Talks uh, podcast listener because uh, that's the only time I've told that Wildcat story. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so there's a lot of people slide into my DM saying Wildcat late at night, you know, so a couple of young blokes. Is your mum membership been reinstated? Like, are you, are yeah, you, I'm allowed back. You're back yeah, in? Yeah, yeah. Are yep. you ready to go? Like, you're gonna, are you, do you want another van? Or you... Well, I've got to host a marquee, which I'm excited to do, um, in the Elms. So I'll be getting to the birdcage sort of a bit later on. I won't be able to. To do my usual. What thing. is hosting the marquee? Uh, you I know, got a tip. Just welcome everyone. Give them a few tips. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, so you've got to hand out a couple of tips. And have you done that? Where you've done for really- Philip Morris too. So I can't vape. You know, be, can't pull out me watermelon ice <laughs> vape because it's a cigarette. Company. What have you? What have you tipped the uh, tip the house down or the opposite? It's happened before. Yeah. There was there was one day down in Lonnie last year. I nearly tipped the card. Like everything I tipped was winning, and the joint was er- erupting. Right. And you feel like you're the absolute best. Right? Boats <laughs> coming up and showing you their bet slips and high fiving you. And um, and so I walked into the Launceston Cup ten days later or whatever it was, like with a head wobble, chest out. People sort of, oh Brownie, you know, like we, we're going to follow you all day again. We heard about what happened in Launceston in, in Hobart. And mate, went zero from nine and like, <laughs> can the joint turn on you quick? <laughs> start booing you. They stop listening to you when you're on the mic. And they start, <laughs> right? Really treating you like shit. Um, and it, with each race that you lose, the pressure grows, the more abuse you got. But that's that's the life of a tipster, you know? Like you've got to take the good with the bad. <laughs> and you live that, like you live that stuff, don't yeah, you? Yeah, mate. You don't get too caught up with it. You change your mindset a bit. You chase a couple of, you know, a bit I of value. you should never do. <laughs> Tell them that you personally just backed one at ten dollars you know, <laughs> elsewhere, and that you're in front for the day. <laughs> that's, that's not advice I give because then they get even more dirty. Yeah. Oh, where the fuck was that tip? Yeah, you know? <laughs> I think you're trying to deliberately sabotage them. Oh, we had some horrendous tips in the tent last week. Four from four, they were all losers. Yeah, it just put, it, it, it is a good uh, it is a good vibe though when the whole tent is on a tip, mate. Nine from nine is yeah, I mean, it's impossible. It's impossible. Do you reckon you can do it? Again? Nah. Mate, not even nah, not even the gator and that could do that. <laughs> the gator. It's too hard. This time of year, like all the horses are trying to win, they're all ready to rock and roll. Yeah, you get mail. Let, like you don't know what to believe. Like I was told that Star Patrol was one of the bets bets of the day, and the it, it ran shit. Um, you just got to take it with a grain of salt and and, and always gamble responsibly. <laughs> Camel responsibly. This ad that you've done, is it coming out? I've heard I've heard there's been they've had to do it three times because of the, <laughs> Well, I'm a perfectionist, right? So we've got to get it right. And I think we will. I think Mel might appear in it. 
Yeah, we need it. Was he going to come out for spring carnival? Or are they holding him back on for? No, he's just going to hold hold back. Yeah, Jeez, it must be some yeah. good production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good production. Well, let's get some questions before we go to the cup. What other races have we got left with the main ones? Uh, so now we're through. We're through the main ones. Corva Cup, Everest, Cox Plate. We've we've done. Um, we've done the Derby. So the the Melbourne Cup's the next one. Yeah, love it. Um, so the Melbourne Cup, right? Very tough race. Oh, like it's just so difficult. I don't spend a lot of time on it because I don't love the cup. Like I, I love what the cup stands for for Australian racing and Flemington and and everything like that. But geez, it's hard. Oh yeah, uh, it's only getting harder. I think. Um, but Point King. Jamie Carr's riding it. It's 10 bucks. Yep. Owned by a couple of battlers, Lloyd Williams and James Packer. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, Lloyd knows what it takes to, to, to buy and then help train, you know, because they reckon he used to help train them. Um, Melbourne Cups, he's won seven of them, right? Last one in 2020. I think but, I backed one of his ones. He bought this one over in Europe. Um, it's raced over in in um, Ireland and came to Australia and flopped first up, tipped out, and then it's it's won it's it won a couple really well. Jamie Carl rode it, got suspended. Benny Mellon rode um, on a couple of weeks ago at Flemington, just couldn't get past that that leader. Ran second, was great. So um, it's going well, and I reckon um, the Freedmans train it, and I think. Jamie Carr will be the second female in the Cup's history to ride a Melbourne Cup winner. That would be big. I be love huge. the name Point King. We love yeah. saying King. That, that, and that's a Regan Bayless term that we've all stolen. Yeah. He calls everyone King. And he that, got it off. That's who we ever, all of us, all the aces, our fantasy league. We all, by the way, he's zero and six in fantasy. We haven't heard from him for, for a while. but Because he was chirping. I was there that night. You were yeah. doing fantasy. Yeah, he's calling up. We're six and oh. He was calling me. He's telling me to just, you know, wish I shouldn't be here, all that kind of stuff. But yeah. he's one of those blokes. He's a yo yo. What was he calling Ginnivan? Ginny Van. Ginny, he goes, yeah. who's this fucking ring in, Kamish? He calls me Kamish. Kamish, who's this ring in? Fucking Ginny Van. You got him off the street, have you, Kamish? Fuck, this competition's cooked. <laughs> 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 and now Regan Bayless is zero and six. And Dylan Gibbons, he's uh, he's stuck with him as a team. But uh, the point king, I like the name. Yeah. And I think while I'm looking at it, I'm good mates, as you know, with Toby Green, and so are you. Circle of Fire, he wouldn't mind me sharing, but he's got a little share in that. Well, it's good. It's a nice horse, and he, he might actually need it to win, um, pay off that fine that he just copped. <laughs> yeah. What yeah, an actually, absolute joke that is, oh, by wow. the way. Seriously. A private party uh, in, inside, no public, saw an event. What, what's doing? Shocking. Shocking behaviour. I think it's disgraceful by the AFL that they would even go down the path of, like, if you want to bring a sex doll to a private party, like, it's your prerogative. Don't you reckon? Is that the mail, is it? Is yeah. that public knowledge? Yeah, yeah. Is it's it? public knowledge. There would you have know? been. It's would... discrimination against plastic. <laughs> 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 but and the, the worst part is poor Tobes wasn't even involved. I know. He's they got... say could it lack of leadership. Oh, Seriously. Wow. Um, so no, a, being a captain, it's a tough job, isn't it? You don't, you don't, there's well, not a, I was never captain, so I was never even in the leadership group. <laughs> You would have been doing surprise, some- surprise. <laughs> well, Toby will need it because he's been rolled with a twenty k fine. Absolutely and- rolled. But is we, his horse- we should start up a GoFundMe page. We should. Well, we don't need to. We'll have the- wait till after the Melbourne Cup because it's twenty one dollars. I mean, if we all just back it and give him a little sling if it wins, that's probably yeah. fair. Yeah. But twenty one dollars. It, it was favoured. It was yeah, meant to be okay, favoured. Horse about goes four good. Ago. It's a pretty open race. So like it's, it's, it's a really difficult. Your horse, the Dozy's in this race as well. Is that Dozy? Yeah. I'm not exactly sure. So Caulfield Cup. Nom for the Cox plate. Be hard to, to back all, up and all yeah. and run all three. Yep. Um, so we'll just we'll see. I'm gonna tip you one that I heard uh just from someone not long ago, but it was just fine. Oh yeah. Someone reckons it's just just well, just prepping nicely for the uh, Melbourne Cup. I think Gay Waterhouse might uh might train it. But it ran a real good race. I think Turnbull Stakes at one led all the way, but it had a nice it just had a bit of a Melbourne Cup run about it. So just fine. Not okay. a bad name, though. We love Gay as well. Yeah. So she's, uh, she's won, won the Melbourne Cup before, so she'd love another. She would. Now, let's get to some questions, dog. Let's get to some questions. All right, questions. mate. Is that the main car? Is that all our tips out the way? No, no. I've got a couple more. Um, Do you want to hand them out now? Because then we'll get to the okay. questions and we'll wrap it up. When I, actually, and 
And give, and what do you do? You're going to put your best. You're going to put your best tip on with the sunnies on. We, there's a lot of talk here, guys. But as you know, Rick Sawyer is our sponsor, and we've got some brand new sunnies online, doggy. You've been harping on about these. Yeah, I love the blue ones. So I've, I've got I've the brown ones. brown because it's the brown dog, and he's not, oh, geez, have a look you at that, mate. Man. How do they feel, dog? They feel unbelievable. These yeah. are the new ones, aren't they? I've been waiting for these. I wore the cherry reds last spring to guineas and everything um, when my world fell apart. <laughs> <laughs> Leave them on while you answer this. Um, but, yeah, mate, I like them. Brown for brown. Well, as if you want the blue when you're the brown dog, you've got the brown Sohos. I love it. Bang. Thanks, Train. Now, give me look, look down the barrel and give us your best tip for the carnival. Best tip for the carnival? Yeah. A, a horse that you just know is going to win. Everyone's going to hold you accountable to it. In the Rixies, we want to look good, feel good. Well, my best, good. my best for the carnival is just a, like off the beaten track tomorrow. At, um, <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow's Friday. Will we'll we have this around? We might have it around. Tari. <laughs> oh, my God. This is sick. Race seven, <laughs> number three, I am the empire. Yeah, right. What's it yeah. paying? Uh, it's, it'll pay about $2.80. The best of the carnival. Mate, we'll give them windburn. We'll go past them that quick. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. A couple of joggies will get off with hypothermia. <laughs> Can um, you read it out again? Just I am one. the empire. Tari, race seven, number three. Now, that's it. What time? That's at four forty. So you're, the pressure's going to be right on you. And, and we'll get this potty. We'll get it. We'll get it turned around. Okay. We'll get it turned around. I'll um I'll make sure we get that turned around. Okay. <laughs> if it wins, we'll get a clip made up as well, because <laughs> that's a great tip. <laughs> and if it comes last, we'll still clip it up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, let's get up some of the uh, the screenshots here that I've got from all our and appreciate everyone that's written in here. They love it. They love seeing the dog. But we'll start from the top. Um, and we'll start from Charles Harrington. A bit of back history and elaboration on the nickname Wildcat. Well, that's – come on, Charles. You obviously haven't listened to the last podcast, so get to that one. You'll love that one. Um, is the dog wearing a suit jacket and shorts to the spring carnival this year? And maybe even uh, thongs. I've never met a man that uh, wears – he's not wearing thongs so today. So, of course, a national outrage. So, obviously, the uh, the VRC gave last year in the lead-up to the, the carnival the short policy, and um, a lot of people thought I took – the piss out of that. I rocked up in shorts and some, you know, like they were like board shorts basically. They were, they were scotch and soda. like <laughs> oh, Of course they were. And and like a jacket. Um, and they put me on the in the paper with a pole, like is this a tie acceptable for the Melbourne Cup? And like 15,000 people voted and it was like a resounding no. <laughs> yeah. They all called me a bogan, <laughs> like tool, like – have some respect for the for the um you know the ed- dress etiquette and they're all spot on. I go my bogan. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I just like to be comfy, and suits make me very uncomfy. Surely you got to wear a suit to the races as the as the king, the god backwards dog. <laughs> <laughs> the god spelled backwards has got me. Well, yeah. Look, there's a couple of times I've walked through because I get there really early because I work cup day, and I carry my, I wear shorts um and t shirt and I carry my suit and they say oh, you can't come in here, you need, and I say, you know, I'm going to change into this as soon as I get up there and I'm on air, and then I just hang it and I don't. I don't actually get into it. And just stay in so, cash. Yeah, I stay, in, I stay in cash. You'd so be the only that's guy a, to be able to do that. That's a little trick too, but I try and adhere to the, the rules a bit more these days. Joshy Locke has written, I don't think Brownie's ever got back around to telling us the Lord's pitch story. Cheers, boys. What's this one about? So I got thrown off Lord's in 2015. Um I was over there swimming the English Channel, um, a- having a- an attempt to do that, and I was doing it for the Shane Warne Foundation because obviously Woody and I were, were great mates. Um, and once that swim had, had been attempted and obviously I, I didn't get across, um, we went up from Dover up to London for three or four days and we're out on the pier going out in Soho and like getting around some of the uh, the, the, the crew that Warney would bring. They'd all just gravitate to him. Um Simon Jones and Matthew Hoggard and um, Glenn McGrath, and we're all going out and having this great time. And um, it was the night before the Lord's test, um, and I, I had a ticket, obviously, to, to go, which Shane had sorted me out with. Um, but he said to me, we're all sitting around with the Channel 9 crew and Mark Taylor and a couple of the producers and everything, and he goes, Dog, how would you like to go in the middle of the, the field tomorrow 
while they're doing the pitch inspection, you know, and I'll let the boys know that you're going to be there and they'll look after you. So I went, mate, that'd be unbelievable. He goes, right, I will make sure you get there nice and early. And um, here's an accreditation. And they gave me a guy called the Buzzards, right? Um, so I'm not going to say his full name, but it was his media accred. And he goes, mate, flash that to security. You'll be straight out there. No one will ask any questions. So that's exactly what I did, right? And I bowl out there in jeans and a T-shirt and the Aussies are warming up. You know, Mitchie Marsh said g'day and I'm standing there on the pitch. Mike Atherton, um, Ricky Ponning sort of gives me a weird look and sort of goes, Brownie, what are you doing out here? I say, oh, mate, it's, yeah, all good. It's all good. <laughs> Ian Botham strolls past, right? Um, and I'm about to walk over and watch the pitch report, right, and the cameras are all there. I've taken a selfie and said, if we – deck looks good. If we win the toss, we should bat, right? I did this and I, and I tweeted it, yeah. right? And – all of a sudden, mate, tap on the shoulder, security, vroom, swarm on me, right? And they say, you're not supposed to be out here. And I was like, yeah, well, no shit. Like, <laughs> I'm the only guy here not in cricket whites, <laughs> right? <laughs> Taking selfies and everything. And they and they look down and they look up and they look down and they said, that's not your media accreditation. I was like, yeah, I know. And, mate, frog marched me off Lords. <laughs> And a cricket reporter, Ben Dorries, who works for the Courier Mail or something, was up in the media box and he must have seen it. And I go back to my seat, don't think much of it. Um, text warning, thanks very much, mate. I'll, I'll get that media cred back to you. And my, my phone starts blowing up, like massively. And he's done an article, right? Campbell Brown thrown off Lord's pitch. Right? <laughs> and it's you can go online and Google it. Yeah, yeah, got thrown <laughs> off. So that was that was the story. Anyway, we we, we went out that night um, to little little Italian joint in Soho, and mate, we were all roar and we laughed. It was the funniest story. <laughs> Vaughn got in trouble, but like it you didn't, know, didn't give a shit. Right? No one gave a shit. <laughs> Tubby's <laughs> laughing. He goes, "Mate, I saw you getting walked off." <laughs> yeah, it was good times. It was a bit embarrassing. Yeah, but no one would have been. Was it? Nah, I don't care. Yeah. Who cares? I belonged out there. It's one thing that um, you and Warnie, but people, I don't know if people know that, but you guys were like best mates, weren't you? Oh, look, he was great mates with everyone. We were very close. I was in his, I was in his poker crew um, and when he was in town, we would we'd go around to his joint once or twice a month um, and play poker and, yeah, like we went to Vegas together. Um, he sounds like one of the greatest guys to be around. Yeah, great guy, yeah. Like go down to Portsea together, down to his joint. Know his his three kids really, really well. Um, Jackson, Summer, and Brooke, who are just outstanding humans. And yeah, mate, um, very, very tragic. Yeah, yeah we loved, is. we loved uh, SK. What, what was your favourite uh, favourite time with Warney? Heaps of trips to Vegas because he loved playing in the World Series of Poker, which coincided with July Fourth. And I used to run a UFC tour over there. Or I didn't run it, but I was invited over there to host. <laughs> Nothing better, mate, than when you get to host. What do you, what's Events. a host that just, you free ticket just and just to, drink piss? I just had to go there, make sure everyone had a good time. <laughs> oh, what, what an outstanding gig. <laughs> You've been hosting for the last 10 years, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> been hosting the last six months Definitely in the Cosmo. Been hosting at the Cosmo, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we, we'd just roll. Like, we'd roll over there and gamble and have fun and go to pool parties and, yeah, it was, it was good. It was is good he times. the king over there as well? Or was yeah. He, like, when you were away Not with as him, recognized. what was it like being in, like, what was it like being in England with him? Yeah, he's, he's the king over there. Like, literally can't stop on the street? No, nah, no, nah, nah, God, no. Uh, yeah. But he was living sort of six months there, six months here, so he's spending a lot of time in the UK. Um, so America was, he wasn't recognized as much, which I think he enjoyed, but, um, yeah, it was good times. Look at the grin. It's the grin of a man that goes, I can't tell the stories. <laughs> very good. Very good. Well, let's get back to the there, questions. There it is. Fan kicked off Lord, sent oh, a wicket wow. after sneaking his way on the Have field. Have a look at the selfie. That's, That's a selfie. If we win the toss, we should elect a bat. And I think we finished the day on one for 250. Chris Rogers made 100. I reckon um, Smudge That's a good Smith photo, made 100. You, so, you, you wouldn't regret that. Nah, mate, I don't regret anything. It was the best. <laughs> what great advice that I gave the Australian cricket team. They <laughs> yeah. batted, we won, the, we won that test. It's not hard, is it? <laughs> nice and green. <laughs> <laughs> Mitchie Marsh would have got right around you. He's a great man, Mitchie. Oh, that's good. I was just thinking, uh, they, uh, you've spoken about it before, but the NBA season's about to start, and I see Ben Simmons is starting to do his best. But to my knowledge that you and him have had a very weird encounter, we it, did. It, it, I, I I don't know. Do you know I nearly got sacked from seven. Nearly got sacked from seven because of this. It's, I think it's worth touching on just with the launch of the NBA. And Benny Simmons is, you know, he's looking good as he always does in the preseason and hope he starts well. But you've, uh, you and him don't see eye to eye, do you? 
Oh, look, it was more, um, I think it was just a misunderstanding. Um, <laughs> I was asked, there used to be a show called The the, uh, the Kick, which was a Saturday night show that I did with Richo and Nat Edwards. Um, and we, we would do some content stuff, you know. So um, Ben Simmons was in town and it was an ill-fated trip when he came to town for four or five days and like um, he'd done a deal with 4 and 20 and um, I got a call from our producer saying, hey, Brownie, um, we've got this opportunity that we can interview Ben Simmons and Christian Petrarca at MSAC. Um, Want to know if you're available and, and you'd be happy to do it. And I was like, yeah, sweet. That's, that'd be great. You know, like I was a big Ben Simmons fan. Um, he'd had that unbelievable year at Philly. And um, so I roll into MSAC and there's about 15 or 20 people around. So there's a, there's a seven sales team that have or- orchestrated the deal. It's the Melbourne media manager there on behalf of Christian. There's Paul Connors yep. and his son. So I obviously wanted to bring him in. Um, and five or six uh, yeah, other people, right? And I'd been given an email, very specific email leading into this interview that Ben Simmons, as team, has requested. You can't ask him these questions, right? And they need to be adhered to. So my producer was very strong in the fact like, Brownie, don't do it. And I read the email and it was like, can't talk about um, his relationships with Kendall Jenner like, or private life. Just wait. Can't talk about um, him getting knocked back from the casino with his friends you know, earlier in the week. Can't talk about the fact that he's not playing for the Boomers this trip. Can't talk about the fact that he's getting paid 20000 by Visit Victoria or whatever. You remember that sort of yeah. broke – there's like all these things that, that I couldn't talk about. So I was like, yeah, no worries. So I start the interview. I'm, I'm doing this interview and it's going okay. Like I'm not getting as much out of the boys as I would have liked. Um, I'm trying to be, you know, be a little bit spicy, you know. And I get towards the end of the interview and I'd got all my good, the good stuff out. So it's a pre-record. So it didn't bother me. And then I, I go, nah, I'm going to go down the path that I know I shouldn't. <laughs> But if he doesn't like it, we'll just edit it out of the final product and that'll be fine. And I go, Ben, you and I don't have a lot in common. Would you agree? And he sort of goes, oh, yeah. I said, you're 6'10 and I'm 5'10. Sort of, okay, where's this going? Yeah. I said, um, you've just signed a $250 million multi-year deal and I'm borderline unemployed. Right? <laughs> you just bought yourself a brand new Bentley, and I drive a, a Toyota Prius. I try to give the sponsors a plug, right? <laughs> I said, but there is one thing that we do have in common, right? And I could see his face going like, okay, where's this going? I said, both of us can't get into Crown. <laughs> well, I think that's good gear, right? And that is self-deprecating, <laughs> yeah. talking about how, how I, I'm unemployed, I'm short, right? I yeah. drive. And he dropped the ball, walked to the end of the basketball court, right? And I heard a, a gasp from all 20 of the people, <gasps> right? And my producer, Frankie, comes running up to me and goes, mate, what the fuck just happened? I said, oh, mate, just, just I think I've, I've blown the interview up. He goes, well, unblow it. <laughs> Go down there and get him back, right? So I walk down, man, like not tail between the legs, but I walk down and he's shooting some hoops, really pissed off. And I go, Ben, mate, I, I just want to apologise for, for that. Um, just taking the piss out of myself, mate. Would you mind coming back and, and finishing the interview? He goes, no, man, that wasn't cool. We're done. And I was like, done, done? He goes, yeah, we're done. So I walked back, man. All the eyes were on me. Seven sales, four and 20, ev- like everyone. <laughs> and like, you could have heard a pin drop. Wow. And I go, what did you, what, what did, what did you say? I said, oh, that's a wrap. That's a wrap for me. <laughs> <laughs> and they were, and then they said, well, if that's the case, get out. So they kicked, they kicked me out of MSAC. <laughs> Christian Batraka ended up doing the interview, right? That went to air. Oh, so they got it. They done. did. They got him to do it, right? And I rang the producer on the way out. And she goes, Oh, that's quick. How did it all go? I said, Oh, <laughs> no, nah, it didn't go as well as I would have liked. Like, yeah. um, I blew the interview up and she goes, <laughs> no, you didn't, Brownie. I was like, 
yeah, I did. She's like, why would you do that? <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I just <laughs> didn't read the room. <laughs> anyway, mate, all hell broke loose. And yeah, I got in a bit of trouble. Um, but I think Juddy, Juddy leaked that on um, the Friday huddle. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, the Triple yeah. M boys got hold of it somehow. Maybe they spoke to someone who spoke to someone and they dropped it and it became like a, another story, which again, you can read. Um, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, if you want to, about how I can completely. That is amazing. I know, was it, man. Was it, was it, well, a, I mean, I've been trying to get the, the vision because we would have it in archives. I've been trying to get the vision for like five years the of the whole interview, of the actual questions so we could clip it up and put it on a potty. Like, it's a funny story. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I just don't mate, It's under lock and key, man. I've been told I'll never get my hands on really? it, but I'm going to keep trying. Got to keep trying because someone's going to have it. Yeah, I'll get it eventually, man. <laughs> right, no, we're going to get it. We, can, we know someone on the inside, don't we? Definitely. My, my, my mate runs the station now. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Oh, wow. Ben Simmons, <laughs> there you go. NBA star Ben Simmons stormed, stormed out of the interview with Campbell Brown, hits back at Kane Corns. Yeah, How's Kane Corns in there as well? I don't, know, I don't know, but, man, that was not great. There you go. It's, but uh, I'm still, you know what? I'm still working for seven, so I didn't <laughs> yeah, go anywhere. Yeah. You're unsackable, as you say. <laughs> nah, no, I'm definitely sackable, man. I'm, I'm one blob doll away from getting sacked, I reckon. <laughs> 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 All right, so there, there's been a lot of people that write back on the stories, but someone's replied and actually because it's such a big, you know, paragraph, he's had to uh, write in. Tommy Hoford, his name is. Do you know what oh, Tom Tommy, Hoford? Nah, mate. He's clearly younger than you, and I'll tell you why. He goes, I've got a cracker story. <laughs> tell me if you remember this. This is quite sick. I love it. There was a day in 2013 when the Suns did a signing day at my local footy club. I was about 11, maybe 12 years old at the time and was hustling for the great man's signature. The great man is the dog. Right. Would have been a long I waited line. my would've, turn would've in line. Would have been a long line, man, for the Suns, <laughs> let me tell you. I, wa- <laughs> I, waited my ter- I waited my turn in line and found a fiver on the ground whilst I was waiting and picked up uh, the fiver and asked Brownie. The first question I asked was, what should I do with my fiver? He gave me a tip at 12 years old with the old man behind me, and then went on and win the Doom in 10,000. It was paying six bucks. I won myself a brand new pair of footy boots a week later. Never had a chance to thank the dog, but can you please thank the dog? There, there you, you go. go. Thanks. My pleasure, mate. That must have been Epaulette won the uh, 2013. <laughs> you remember the day. 10,000, yeah. <laughs> nice win. Nice win. So glad I got you a pair of footy boots. <laughs> 12 year old lining up for the dog signature. <laughs> sick, finds a fiver on the ground, and he goes, What should I do with that? And dog says, I'll tell you what to do with it. <laughs> Go and put it on a six dollar pop in the Doom in ten thousand, and it lobs. Oh, that's magnificent! I, I hope uh, <laughs> he got himself some new boots. He might have won himself a pair of boots, but I hope he hasn't. I hope he hasn't done his life since on the punt because <laughs> of that one day sliding doors moments. Oh, game more responsibly, <laughs> always. But that is uh, that is outstanding. That was one of my favourite things that were written in this week. Um, <laughs> it's just, uh, Tommy Hofert. Uh, there you go. He said thanks. And uh, no, yeah, you got anything else to say least, to the great it's man? It's the least I could do, Tommy. Everyone wants to know what the dog's biggest collect on the Rex hunt has been. That's from Darren Clark, nine. And while we're at it, Matty Said wants to know the Sedwardo. He reckons, what is your biggest quaddy collect? Uh, no, I hate quaddies. Hey, Quaddies, never do them. Um, I'm always out first leg and it just gives me the shits. So I've never had a really great quaddy collect. Biggest win I've had on the punt. Um, it was a Bjorn Baker runner uh, during COVID, um, and I was on the quick backup, and um, can't remember exactly what it was called, but but it did lob and it paid forty four dollars fifty, and um, oh, wow. <laughs> the thing is, because it was COVID, and I was at, at home with the wife and kids at the time. Um, it was a Wednesday, and I didn't want th- like them to think that I was a bit sick, <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> So <clears throat> there's a thing, if I stand up, like if I'm sitting here and I've had a bet, right, and I stand up, right, it means that I've got it going for a fair bit. And if I start walking towards the TV and I get quite close to the TV in the concluding couple of furlongs, right, it means that I'm in the mix and it's, it's a, quite a big collect. So I just remember this particular day I got up and I started walking towards the TV and I, I end up really close, and it, it hit the line of one and paid forty four fifty, and I'd had a, a proper lash in it. <laughs> and, and anyone that knows me knows what a lash is. Uh, and I could, like, it won, and I like, I was so, like, I was so pumped. Oh, it's the biggest win I've ever had, especially for a, a singular bet. 
wasn't a multi. Um, but I couldn't cheer or high five anyone. I had to, I had to just like walk back and sit on the couch <laughs> and pretend nothing had happened. Yeah. <laughs> and you keep it on the down low, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Withdrew <laughs> responsibly, you know, paid off the home loan. <laughs> what home loan? <laughs> <laughs> and with it, you don't go, the, you don't go each way, do you? No, nah, never. And what was the name of this horse? Savvy Valentino. Savvy. I'll, I'll never forget it. Ah, uh, dog. So we've got a question <laughs> here. I know you're on your, you're no, doing your form. Your best up, up and coming Cooper horse. Bentley has written in his best up and coming horse. What would it be? So, Doc, give us an up and comer. Uh, Peter Snowden trains uh, a horse that absolutely has bolted in its last two starts. It's called Fire Star. Mm. Fire Staff. That's one I'll be following. Fire Staff or Fire Star? Star? Oh, Star. Yep. Love it. Best advice when picking a quaddie from Sammy Summers? I've got an unbeatable method for you because <laughs> I hate quaddies. Field, 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 field. And then you can't <laughs> fucking lose. You probably do your dough every week, but. <laughs> you might win this one day. Winner, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I think that's pretty much it. A lot of oh, one more from Tyler Hinbrain. Will Brownie be at Cool and Races twenty twenty five? One of my favourite days I've ever had at the race course. I won't be at Cool and probably ever again. Not because I don't love the place, but it's just so hard to get to. It is country race track, three hours inland from Perth, the wheat belt there. I went there on Bossy's bucket list a couple of years ago with um, me, Ty Canelli, and Bossy in a Winnebago, <laughs> mate. It was all time. That sounds like all fun. All time. Good crew as well. Yeah, good, really good fun. Good you, people. You love your, you love your, your, your horses, don't you? Like something shocking. Oh, I love it. Yeah, look, a bit like you and your NFL. Yeah. Like, I, like you get up at three o'clock in the morning every um, yeah. Sunday night, Monday morning, and watch them through, and I and I can't fathom it. But then I look at how you look at me with the horses and stuff. And how much I love it, and you're like, like you almost love them more than you love anything else. Uh, it's a, it's good. Yeah, I've it's got good. a story from when I was at Frio, and I don't know whether this is true. But I thought I'd save it today, but th there was a time where Hawthorne players were asked to present, you know, someone that's a female that means more than anything to them in their life, and I'll, I'll, I'll let you tell me if I'm going down the right track. Is, is there any truth to this? <laughs> You got good mail. Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever told this story before. <laughs> this, and, and this is, this really, uh, we'll probably close it out on this, but this is this up there with the best story I've ever heard. If it's true. That's Tell true. Me. It's <laughs> true. Um, I reckon it was like 2006 and, and we're in the theatre right out at Waverley and Clarko had got to, a, a lady in to, to talk all things, you know, life to us. And the homework had been, Bring in a a photo of the woman in your life that is most dear to you, right? So, as you can imagine, so I, I sort of so sat in the middle that day, and we start at the back right, and yeah, you know, they go along. I've brought in this photo of my you know, six month old daughter, um, you know, names such and such. This is a photo of my grandma. She raised us, you know. This is my mum. This is my girlfriend, this is my fiance, whatever it may be. And it's lovely. You know, we, we had to do a one minute spiel of why we brought in this photo and what, what they meant to us. And it came to me. And I thought that the meeting needed a little bit of hubris, right? A little bit of humor. <laughs> it, was, it was getting far too sentimental and, and emotional, right? And so I'd printed out, um, a picture of Sunline, and I stood up. I said, "Look, this is Sunline, the the great mare from New Zealand. She's won thirty two or forty eight. <laughs> you know, she's won two Cox plates, fourteen Group Ones, and and I'm giving this spiel, right? Well, mate, the lady who was an ex copper, disgusted, <laughs> kicks me out of the theatre, and the boys are, like the boys all start cheering and erupt, right? I think it's hilarious. So she says on her way out, "Don't come back in here until you can be serious, right?" So I was like, "Fuck." So I go out <laughs> and I go to the computer area and I Google something and I come back in. I sort of sheepishly walk back in and I sit down in the same seat and they keep going along. I wasn't sure when she was going to come to me and then she says, Righto, Campbell, stand up and be serious this time. 
I was like, yep, sure. <laughs> this is Maccabi Diva. She won three <laughs> Melbourne Cups, 03, 04, 05. The great Glen Boss rode her. She went on and won a Cox Plate, $14 million in prize money. Mate. <laughs> Join her ups. She literally kicked me out of the class in front of Clark, in front of everyone, man, indefinitely. <laughs> so I fucking went home. <laughs> <laughs> true, true story. My mail, is spot on, man. Man. My mail is spot oh, on. You need in, in team meetings, you do need to have a little bit of fun. But um yeah, I probably I probably you know, took quite a serious matter and and made a mockery of it. <laughs> <laughs> but but hey, I love those two horses. <laughs> That is outstanding. I'm glad that story had more to it than what I've been told. There's even more to it. I didn't know you'd come back for seconds on Maccabi Diva. Uh, Which one would you pick out of the two, just quietly? Uh, I only know Maccabi, really. I think the reason I love racing is because of Sunline. Yeah. Like, okay. she pricked my interest, man. And, like, to, to win 32 races in out of 48, mm. like, freakish. I mean, yeah, Winx has gone on and done more. Melbourne Cup's are hard to win, especially with the weight Maccabi Diva had, but... I, I, I'm doing what I do now because of Sunline, I reckon. Top three horses? Go quickly. Uh, uh, Winx, Black Caviar. Has to be Sunline. And, and Sunline, I'd yeah. have to get Maccabi Diva at three. Yeah. But I mean, how fortunate are we that in the space of like, the last decade, um, we've seen two of the all-time greats in Winx and Black Caviar. Yeah. Crazy. You know? Winx's, yeah, I remember being at Winx's fourth Cox Plate and seeing some oldies next to me crying. Really? Just obviously been around. I mustn't have seen anything like it. Yeah. Mate, thank you so much for coming on. It's <laughs> always a pleasure. Thanks for having me, Train. We might need a recap. If you go, we'll work it out, but there's, uh, we'll put up some graphics this year and we'll really uh, make sure that we're reminding people of your tips throughout. Can we go? Thanks for the ricks, mate. And um, Anyone out there, I'm looking for a rental because I can't keep living in the same building as this man. <laughs> that, is a, that is a disgrace. This bloke <laughs> moved in and I have lost I have lost everything. <laughs> I've lost everything. <laughs> All I do is drink. Are you not entertained? <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Brown Dog's been superb. Thank you so much, mate. Super year from you. You've just been everywhere, by the way. Seven, you're on the – you've gone from VFL, you've gone – see you later, boys. Mickey Barlow and the boys, see you later. I'm on the ground now interviewing all the boys. You're the, you're, the, you're the host of Cosmopolitan. You're hosting Kentucky Derbies. You're, you're running the Melbourne uh, you know, Spring Carnival. But uh, if you can tip us a few winners, mate, that's all that matters. But, yeah, thank you again Fingers for crossed. jumping on. Thanks, Train. Great work, mate. Thanks. I saw this uh, this potty went number one in the country the other week with um, Craig Bellamy, so good job. Yeah, Craig Bellamy took it to the top. Let's see if the uh, brown dog can get it right back up there. And uh, to everyone out there, thank you so much for your support. We're going to crank a few more pods out. Tommy Talks podcast just needed a spell because there was a lot going on around the finals, but uh, we're back and the brown dog's going to kick us off in style. So thank you. If you haven't already subscribed, hit that button, flick this to someone that loves uh, the Rex Hunt and loves a laugh and uh, loves their spring <laughs> Mate, carnival. Hang on, hang on. Do you know what the Rex Hunt is? And it's not the part. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. I'll see you next week. <laughs>Aces, I know I always go on about the Rixies, but i got huge news. We have all our styles and colours restocked on the website right now. Get online, grab some sunglasses at rickseyewear.com.au right now and use our little discount code ACES if you want a 20% discount code on the house.